In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a shadow catcher in the Cycles Render Engine and also in the EV Render Engine. And I'll have timestamps in the video description if you just want to watch how to do it in Cycles or how to do it in EV. Real quick though, before we start, I wanted to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. Sketchfab is an awesome 3D model site where you can preview 3D models in your browser. You can even view them on a phone, tablet, or in AR and VR. They also have a huge 3D model store where you can purchase models and assets. You can even apply to sell your own models on the platform. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create an object that the shadows can be casted onto. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to search for a plane. You could do this for any object, but I'm going to use a plane. That makes the most sense. I'm just going to scale this plane up and then I'll also select the cube and just bring it up. And then I can just go up into rendered view. And because we have this light right here, it's going to cast a shadow on the ground. So creating a shadow catcher is really easy to do in cycles. I'm just going to select the plane and then I'm just going to click right over here on the object properties. Then right down here, if you scroll down to visibility and open this up, you can see that on the mask here, there is shadow catcher. Now it doesn't look transparent right now. And that is because the background isn't transparent. So to make the background transparent, you're going to click right over here on the render properties and then open up the film tab then right down here in the film tab you can turn on transparent and now the background is transparent but you can still see the shadow underneath the cube now it's a little bit hard to see the reflections in the cube because the cube isn't very reflective so what I did is I just added a monkey head and then gave it a dark shiny material now you can see that the monkey head is reflecting this plane here so to fix this problem just make sure that you have the shadow catcher object selected and then go right back over here to the object properties now if you scroll down here under the visibility, there is the ray visibility. You can turn off diffuse and glossy, and now you can see that it's not going to reflect the plane. So now I'll just center the camera right here, and then I'll press F12 to render the image. So there are a few more things you could do with this image. You could head over to Blender's Compositor, and then click on Use Nodes, and in Blender's Compositor, you could press Shift A, and you could search for an alpha over node, and just drop the alpha over node right down here. And then also, I do have the Node Wrangler turned on, so I'm going to hold down the Control and Shift key, and click on the alpha over. You could also just press shift A and search for a viewer node and plug it up. So then what you can do is you can take this image here and plug it into the bottom image on the alpha over. And now you can see that if you change this color, that's going to be the background color. And you can also add in external images and put them in the background as well. So I'm just going to drop in this background image right here, and then I'm going to plug the image up to the image. And you can see that now that's in the background, but you can still see through those shadows. Now, if you want to save this image to your computer and keep the alpha transparent, then what you can do after it renders is you can click on image and then just click on save as. So when you're saving your image, you can press N and that's going to open up the side panel right here. And then you need to change the file format to PNG. And that way it's going to keep the alpha transparency. Now also one other really important thing is you need to set the color to RGBA. That way it's going to use the red, green, blue, and alpha. And then you can just click on save as image. And then what you could also do is you could open up the image in a 2D program like GIMP or Credo or Photoshop, and then you can add in your image as a separate layer. And you can see that the image has the alpha transparency in it, so you're able to see through those shadows. So that is how you create a shadow catcher in the Cycles Render Engine. Now I'll show you how to do it in the EV Render Engine. All right, so I've opened up a new scene in Blender, and then right over here on the Render Engine, I'm gonna change this to EV. So I'll press Shift A, and I am going to again add a plane, and I'll just scale the plane up, and then I can just bring the cube up. And then we can just hop over into the rendered view and you can see that because we have this lamp here, it's casting a shadow onto the plane. So in EV, we're going to need to create a shader setup to get the shadow catcher to work. So I'm gonna click right over here on the shading tab and then just click on new to add a new material. So first we're going to need a basic shader to cast the shadow onto. So you could use the principled BSDF, that would work fine. Um, I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for a diffuse because a diffuse is a very very basic shader. So I'm just going to delete the principled and then I can just plug the output right here into the surface of the material output. All right. So we have our diffuse BSDF and the shadow is being cast onto that material. But with a shadow catcher, we need some sort of transparency. So what I could do is I could press shift a and I can search for a transparent BSDF. So where the shadows are, I want that to be a little bit transparent, but then where the rest of the plane is, I want that to be fully transparent. So what I'm going to do is actually mix these two together. So to do that, I'll press shift a and I'm going to search for a mix shader and then I can just plug these both up. 
and then I can just plug the shader up to the surface on the material output. So right now this is just evenly blending in between them, but I don't want that because I want it to be fully transparent everywhere else. And then just where the shadows are, I want that to be a little bit diffuse. So what I need to do is I need to create a mask and then use that as the factor to tell it where it's going to be transparent and where it's going to be diffuse. To do this, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for another diffuse BSDF. And again, you could use principled shaders if you wanted to, but I'm just going to be using diffuse. So what I want to do is I want to create a mask using this shadow data, but I need some way to convert this data here into color data. To do that, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a shader to RGB and I'll just drop this down here. So now I can plug this shader data into the shader right here. And then using the node wrangler add on, I can press control shift and click on the shader to RGB to preview it. And you can see that it looks pretty much exactly the same as the diffuse BSDF. If I control shift and click on this one and control shift and click on this one, you can't really notice any difference, but this is now color data instead of shader data. So now I can plug this color right here into the factor, and then I can control shift and click on this to preview it. And then also this diffuse BSDF right here, we need to take the color and we need to turn it all the way to black. Now I can't really tell if this is working right now because the background isn't transparent. So again, to make the background transparent, I'm going to click right over here to the render properties and then go right down here to the film tab. And then you can just click on transparent to make it transparent. Now again, it doesn't really look like it's working and that's because you need to tell the EV shader to use the transparency. To do this, just make sure that you have this object selected and then hop over to the material properties. I'm going to go right down here and open up this settings tab right here. And then there is this blend mode right here. I need to click on this and I need to change it to alpha blend. And now you can see that it's sort of working, but it's actually flipped the wrong way around because you can see that where the shadow is supposed to be, it actually looks more transparent. So I just need to flip these two values. So just flip them. So make the diffuse up here and then the transparency down here. Now you can see that it's sort of working. You can actually see the shadow right there, but the problem is that there is still a lot of shadow all around here. And this is because we are using the light and shadow data and we are turning that into a mask and plugging the mask into the factor. So just to show you what I mean, I'll duplicate the diffuse and then plug this one into the surface. Now you can see that if I move this light around, there is a shadow right here, but because this is a point light, there's also shadow right over here. Those darker areas and those shadows around the edge of the plane are actually contributing to this mask. And so it's actually making it darker. You can see that where the light is shining, it becomes transparent. So I'm going to click right over here on the object data properties on this lamp, and I'm going to change it to the sunlight. And what this sunlight does is it shines light all over the surface of the object and it's coming from the rotation of the lamp. And then just one other really important thing, if the strength is set too low, it's still going to be a bit dark. And what I've found is that you need to at least set the strength value to a value of five. Now, if you want to go on the safe side, you could turn it up a little bit, but you can see if I turn the strength down to like four, you can still see that plane just a little bit. But if you set it to five or higher, the plane is now invisible. Now, if you want to customize the strength of your shadows, what you can do is press shift A and search for a color ramp node and drop the color ramp node right down here. Now, if you take this black value and you start to turn it up, you can see that it's going to make the shadows more transparent and less strong. All right, so you can now just center the camera to wherever you want, and then you can press F12 to render. Now, just like I talked about in the cycles part of this tutorial, what you can do is you can head over to the compositing tab right here, and then you can click on use nodes. And again, you can press shift A and you can search for an alpha over node if you want to add something into the background of the image. So then this image here just needs to be on the bottom one of the alpha over. Over. And then if I hold down the control and shift key and click on the alpha over, that is again using the feature from the node wrangler add on, you can now see that the shadow is transparent. And so you can just change this color and it will be in the background. And as before, you could also add in a background image and then plug the image into the image right here. And now you can see that sure enough, that's going through the shadow and you can see it in the background. And then if you want to save this image and keep the transparency, once you render the image, you can just click on image and then click on save as. And then just like before, you can press N to open up the side panel right here and to store the alpha transparency in the image, the file format needs to be set to PNG. And then the color here needs to be set to RGBA. And that way it'll keep the red, green, blue, and alpha channels. And then you can just click on save as image. And then if you were to open this up in a 2D program like Krita, you can see that I've added this in as a separate layer and you're able to see through those shadows. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope the tutorial was helpful and thank you for watching.